<laughs> no call for next year. He's, he's been good. Um, all right. So uh, Nick Sirianni on Jalen Hurts playing this week. Quote, does he have a chance? Of course he does. We'll see what happens as the week progresses. Not much of an update there, but just giving you what he said uh, a little bit earlier. That <clears throat> I would lean towards Minshew if I hear that, but, you know, no guarantee here. Um, that's for sure. So uh, there's that. Um, called Lane, one of the toughest guys he's been around. Confirms he will hold the surgery off on that torn abductor. <laughs> Lane is the best tackle in the NFL. Obviously, when you're missing one of your best players on the team, that's going to affect you, is what he had to say uh, regarding Lane. So as as things trickle in, and if we can, we can kind of read between the lines with some of the things that Nick had to say, we will pass those along, guys. So that's just kind of where things are. What's your read? Any read into what he said regarding the quarterback situation? I, I, that to me, in all actuality, when he says something like that, it just led me to believe that, that Jalen's going to play. Okay, mm. I think he's going to play just from my just just from my way that what I what I read from him saying that. I mean, read it again. Uh, does he have the chance to play? Question mark. Yes, he has a chance to play this week. We'll see how the week progresses. That to me is telling me, yeah, he's going to play because we need this game. Mm. We need it. We'll sit him next week. We need this game. We need it in the worst way. Mm. All right, that Mr. Gunn. Guns blazing. Sounds like games been shipped to me. I'll, I'll wait until Friday um, because if if he was going to play, I mean, I understand he's not going to tip his hand right now. Exactly. Um, I would like to hear, you know, he's, he's further along this week in his rehab than he was last week. I didn't hear that. Yeah, he, um, he he basically said uh, he's feeling a little bit better than 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 last week, and you know we don't know. That's about it. There has there wasn't much more. A little bit better. That's it. Yeah, he he's feeling. Yeah, he said that he's uh, is feeling better. He just that's all. Okay. He's feeling better. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't tell me anything on Wednesday. Friday's the te- Friday's the telltale day in terms of where he is. That's and you guys saying. know, I'm not a hot take guy. No, you're not. I don't just say stuff to say. I truly believe. I do. I truly believe right. that he's going to play. Mm-hmm. I think it's I not think me being a hot take guy. Yeah. It, 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 and it's not It's not me. Um, this isn't any inside trader information. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have the connection to D-Gun. And that's, you know, that's a damn shame that I don't have the connection D-Gun has. And I played for the team. I swear <laughs> here. And he has more connections than I do. Yeah. Well, well, you got to remember, first of all, you were here four years and then you left and went to many different stops. So you lost a lot of context. I was in 25 consistent years and built those relationships over 25 years doing what I do. You know, it's not that they don't trust you because you're an alumni of theirs. But, you know, the thing about a lot of the people that when you got here, no longer are there in a lot of ways. I mean, you know, you you had you had Joe Banner when you were there. Howie Roseman is here. I mean, you know Howie, but you didn't know Howie like you knew Joe. And right. Joe made it Joe made it very clear. He told me on a number of occasions his his job was I don't want to be buddies with with the players. I'm Never. not trying to be friends with the players. Whereas Howie wants to have a relationship with the players, with their families. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a big there's a big deal. You have the same owner, but look at the the, the turnaround you've had in terms of inside people. I mean, when you were there, Big Dom was assistant to uh, Butch. Yeah. You know, Butch was the head PR guy. Um, and now Dom is the head PR guy. You know, it's a big difference. See, I've had, my goodness, since Dom, I've been here since Dom took over as head PR. You know, I knew Butch. Butch and I were close. Dom watched our relationship. And then Dom and I, my relationship flourished in that regard. You know, um, you continuously go back now more than I do. But you know what I'm saying? There's, there's a little bit difference in terms of who I can talk to because I've had the 25 years of consistency with people, even when there was turnover. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, guys. It's a little gotcha. different. It's a big gotcha. difference. Hey, also, uh, Nick would not confirm whether or not C.J. Gardner-Johnson will come in, will uh, move into the practice window. He's eligible to come uh, out of it, but he wouldn't confirm that he is. And again, read into it how you want. I, I would think if he's ready to go, they would say that, he was ready that he's ready. Um, so, you know, Nick, if, if I'm reading, I'm just kind of, you know, trying to get as much as I can here with what the, with the beat writers or, or who are there at the press conference presently are saying essentially is like, he's Nick's kind of dodging a lot of stuff with questions regarding Hertz 
C.J. Gardner-Johnson. Uh, what you do at right tackle, he wouldn't commit to anything there. So, you know, I, I, I guess not unexpectedly, he's expectedly he's not tipping his hand. He's doing um, the right thing. He's doing the right thing. Exactly. Right. Why should yeah. he, and when I say you, I don't mean you, but why should he tell you what they're planning on doing or thinking on Wednesday? Yeah. You know, all these teams, all these teams, which I think is funny in a lot of ways, because if you're practicing for an opponent, you're going to practice for any and everybody you could possibly face. You have all these scenarios covered leading up to a game. But why should I tell you as my enemy what I'm going to do or what I have at my disposal until I absolutely have to tell you? I mean, it's, it's part of the gamesmanship across. They, these teams are so secretive nowadays, man. The, the openness that when I first broke into business, the openness that existed from coaches and, and to the media, that doesn't exist anymore. You can thank right. you can thank the Patriots for that with all that Spygate stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that, that, and that's, that's fine with it. It keeps us guessing, keeps mm-hmm. us talking about the possibilities. I have no problem with that. No, no doubt. Like, and so that's kind of where things are right now. Like I said, if we get anything, if there's any kind of inkling, because uh, there's a lot of things up in the air right now. I mean, let's face it, quarterbacks up in the air. What you do with the with the offensive line, you know, is up in the air right now. Um, what's going to happen if CJ Gardner Johnson, if he's able to come off, if he is coming off, will he play this week? We still don't even know that. Like they could start practicing him. It doesn't mean he's going to play. So we just don't right. know. There's a lot of things right now hanging in the balance. Uh, that's for sure. It, you know, Nick went on to say he's you know, regarding Lane. He's one of the toughest players I've ever been around. You know, et cetera. I mean, I, we we kind of get it. So he, I thought this was interesting, guys. Today, uh, it was a very good piece from uh, from Ruben Frank, Barry, your colleague at NBC Sports Philadelphia, and and you know, Ruben great with the stats, and we know that. Um, but so he he uh, in his story today, first nine games for the Eagles, they were a plus fifteen in, in terms of uh, turnover differential which was best in the NFL, number one, okay, plus 15 through nine games. Last eight games, minus six, which is last in the NFL. They went from first to last, first nine games versus last eight games. In fact, they have 14 turnovers uh, during that time span, which is the second most in the NFL. Now, that's aided by a lot the last two weeks. What four on Sun uh, on Saturday against the Cowboys, and then you go back to yep. that Bears game, right? And it was three, correct three. me if I'm wrong. Yep, three. yeah, the two picks, yep. and then the Miles fumble. So you're talking about seven just in the last two weeks. So this is more of an issue, a real recent issue, than it was even the games before that. But nonetheless, this was, you know, the, the stats that you always talk about in the NFL are, you know, the ones where it's, you know, take the ball away is gigantic and protect the ball. And the Eagles were really good at both. And they haven't been really good at both of late. I think both of those things can easily be corrected. Certainly turning the ball over can be cleaned up easily. But what we aren't seeing is maybe the interceptions that we had seen. And, you know, part of this is it's been a bit of a struggle for Darius Slay of late. Yeah, he hasn't had interception in a long, long time. (laughs) Long time. I, oh, uh, I can tell you exactly when. Week tell six when, against Derek. Dallas. That's what I was week, waiting for. Week, yeah. yeah, week six yeah. against Dallas is the last time he had an interception. Okay, so we're headed now, into now week 16. I mean, game 16. Yeah. yeah. Week 17. That's a long time, man. That's two plus months. Where's he been? Uh, uh, it, it's not, it, it hasn't been. It's the corner's a little bit different because they don't right. test them. Yeah, because you you tend not to test guys. You know it's going to go out there. I mean, I I can remember just adamantly how many times you could you could probably count on your hand how many times they threw a Dion throughout uh right. you know a season. Yeah. So you know I can right, understand right. that. Has he been in a position? It is not like they're. It's not like they're throwing his way. So I'll give him a pass on that. I just can't give him a pass on throwing this guy under the bus. I can't give him a pass on that. You know right. I I know he's been playing. He hasn't been playing at an elite level, but he's been playing at a level in which we could win it. Put it like that. My, my, my biggest concern is that you're a veteran player. You know inside and out what to say and what not to say. And this team has shown nothing but unity the entire season. And all of a sudden there's one bad moment, and all of a sudden you head start turning from a, yeah, can't, a can't leader. Have that. Can't you have can't that. have that. You can't do that, man. You can't. Because if anything, now you're messing with the psyche of your own young teammate. 
it's one thing to call him behind closed doors and hey man, let's go over what happened here. Okay, this this one play, we were leading by seven. This one play changed the complexion of the game. Now let's talk about how it unfolded. What did you not hear? What did I not say to you so we can correct this moving forward? You don't put it on, you don't put your boys on blast like that in, in social media. You don't, you just don't do that, man. You don't. You've, well, you've come too far. You've come from too far to do that. Well, I, I, I'm going to tell you this. It's a precedence now because it's the second time he's done this. And both times it was it was in a losing effort. He did the same thing. Wait, against, this year? Uh, yeah, Washington? he did the same thing against Washington. Yes, he was like, well, really? you know, I was, just, I was just following the dude, you know, and he was free. He wasn't my guy, but I was just following him, you know, just because, you know. I, oh, he's, you know, I, I don't remember that. Okay. Yeah, he said what? that. Remember he said that? I was just what? following him. He wasn't my – that wasn't my assignment, but I was just following him and I had to go make a tackle. Yep. He said wow. the same thing. Yep. I mean, wow, there is a precedence for it. That's bad you know, mojo right it, there. You know, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Uh, you know, I, 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 I was just following him. You know, he makes sure the, 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 the buck is not passed to him. You can believe he, that. He's got rabbit ears, and he's way too concerned with what, what noise is happening. He's got it. He's got You know, this isn't Detroit, man. You know, it, 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 you're, you're going to have more eyeballs on you, and you got to be able to deal with this kind of stuff. Well, he you, better, can, you need he to play no, better. He wasn't good. but I, young I'm not blaming him for third and 30, but he wasn't good either on Saturday against the Cowboys. So if that's the case, just eat it, man. And, 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 you know, the people who know, know that it wasn't on you. You don't need to sit there and point it out and, 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 and hammer that kid too, because he didn't have a good game. And we well, know I did a, I did a breakdown. I, I mean, what's one thing about, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth, man. When I said it, it was the truth when I said it. And man, when I looked at film, you know, it may change after I look at film. But when I say something, I usually mean what I say. And that's, you know, but at the end of the day, when I watch this team, when I watch this defense, this defense is really good, man. It's really good at, 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 at taking away your strengths. And it took away Dallas's strength. It took away Washington's strength. Their strength was getting the ball to those receivers that they had. And they took it away for the most part, but then, you know, a couple plays they, you know, they were laxed on. For the most part, they did. Against Dallas, they stopped the run. That thing was, you know, amped up by the run. It just so happened that Dak Prescott went out there and just played a, a perfect game, man. I mean, it was a time when he was like 19 for 19 or something like that after the interception. Yep. You know, so they took away the run, but sometimes that leave you susceptible for, you know, the pass or, you know, vice versa. It's mm -hmm. really clear what they go out there to stop. So, it's an in-game adjustments need to be me taken, but this team has still got a good defense, still got a good offense. Well, how do you so how do you account for even if you want to take the slay angle out of it? How do you account for the fact that they're not taking the ball? We all know that there's been sloppy turnovers, and you have a backup quarterback. Stuff's going to happen, and you know, and we know we know we that put them in a bad position. Yeah, Miles has got to be better too, and all that. But in terms of taking actually taking the ball away, the, the crazy thing is you're still getting that awesome pass rush. You know, right. and you're still getting Reddick with, with strip sacks and all those kind of things, but it just doesn't appear like, and it, some of this is bad luck too. You just didn't fall on a couple things, you know, here and there. Well, I, I hate to put more on Josiah Scott, but okay. teams are starting, teams will, will take advantage of Josiah Scott. You know, teams see when he, they, they see him, they're taking advantage of him. Officer Corner said, look, we can throw with this guy right here. Let's take advantage of him. Let's game plan putting him on our best player. And that's what they did. They put they put CD Lamb in motion, mm. and bam, he ended up over Josiah Scott more times than not. Mm. That's how you do it. You just get coaches get paid millions of dollars, man, to either go out and stop something or make something better than what it really is. And that's exactly what they did. They knew that mm -hmm. they can take advantage of Josiah Scott. Once Maddox left the game, CD Lamb went off, and it was all gameplay. You got to take your hat off to Moore, you know, offensive coordinator. Kelly Moore, Moore. yeah. More put him in great positions, man. Kept it so you couldn't really bracket him. Made sure that you know you couldn't, um, you couldn't, you know, off the line. He didn't have double coverage. That's great game planning, man. That's just knowing what your guy can do and what his strengths are, and 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 adding a little bit of that zest in there with you know moving around so you couldn't get a beat on where he could be. Mm. So I mean, it's just some, sometimes you get the bear, sometimes the bear gets you. Yeah, yeah, no question. And it could happen again this week. It could happen again. But you have to minimize the after catch damage a lot better than you did. Yes, that's, that's another thing. See, that's because CD Lamb caught balls and all of a sudden he's turning and running, man. 
that's 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 damage control right there. Mm -hmm. You you've got now. So now here I, here's another thing I'm looking forward to seeing this Sunday. How does the slave respond to all the criticism he's enduring this week? Because I'm looking at his Twitter line. He's talking about other things and people, are, you know, he's like promoting somebody's game or something like that. But, hey, man, it, it, leave the games alone and, and, and just focus on getting back to playing how you were, stuff like that. See, people won't let it go. Now, I'm wondering, is this stuff getting under his skin to the point it'll it'll hit him rise to the occasion and play like the slave we saw the first what? six, seven weeks of the season? Come on, D-Gun. What? He going to go out there frothing at the mouth. He's pissed off right now. Saying, Everybody talking saying. smack about him. I'm just saying. Bruh, I'm just bruh. saying. He he's he's got a heater on right now. He's highly upset. So yeah, you're gonna get Slay's best. Now what is what is what is what do they have out there? That he's gonna be going against uh, Chris Olave. 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 Boy can play. He can play. Uh, he's 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 iffy right now. He's um he was hurt. He didn't play last week. And he's on the fence right Taysom now. Taysom Hill, you know, he'll be more, I guess, a linebacker right, cover right, or a safety right. cover. I don't know, but he, you know, he's another one who's out there. Taysom Hill but, did a good job of playing that, playing that tight that end. Wild last yeah, he played yeah. well last week. Yep. Yeah, yep. Now I will say this also, Barry, and I know this for a fact. A lot of times, players can play angry to the point you you play out of your you play out of your game. You know, yeah. sometimes you, sometimes your anger gets the best of you. You do cer certain things you normally don't do. An extra hit. Rough in the past, you know. You know what I'm saying? Those little yeah. things. You can. You. It's one thing to be fired up. It's another thing to allow your anger to control you in situations like that. To the point you you step out of your your game mode. Got to watch for that stuff, you know. Because you know, from what we see of Darius on on social media, I mean, he ain't afraid to go back and forth with people. A lot of players, like Cameron Hayward, came out and said, "Man, why are you jaw jacking with these people? Man, you they don't know what was called." Why are you over here there? You know what? You're right. Somebody had to tell him. You know what? You're right. I'm going to enjoy my Christmas. So, you know, so he lets certain things get under his skin that you shouldn't. Well, just, now, like, just, just like you know how to get under my skin. <laughs> I, no, no, no. And no, I just no. come that. back, and, and then you have namaste. I get back to, you know, be what? I'll get back to it. Let, let's, <laughs> let's tell it like it is. You have, this, you have this master's degree in how to get under my skin. There's a difference here. Okay. All right. No, but seriously, yeah. Yeah. you know what Slay Slay, we we know Slay. Slay is Slay is one of those dudes that he he takes everything personally and yes. and, and, and they makes his it makes him, you know, cream rise to the top. And that's exactly why you saw against Minnesota, cream rose to the top. He played he played an excellent game. Games which he played well in. Everybody's talking about CD Lamb the first game. He went him and the rest of those guys had a great game against him. You know, I believe this game is going to be the same type of game. They just don't have uh, – well, we'll see if Chris Olave play. He is a baller. But uh, Traquan Smith, I remember him coming out. He was pretty good. He's been bouncing around the league. Started out with Minnesota. I don't think he's anybody we need to worry about. Kurt Merrick, uh, no. Uh, Mar uh, his name Marquez uh, Callaway. Yeah, Michael Thomas is hurt again. He's yep. always hurt. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rashid, Rahid, I mean Shahid. Uh, you know he's a rookie, so mm -hmm. we'll see. It's it's a lot. They do a lot of unorthodox stuff in their offense, very unorthodox because they got Alvin Kamara, they got Taysom Hill, right? So we'll see. Okay. We'll All right. Well, I want to hit you guys with concerns versus confidence and kind of where you're at. So uh, for me, it's the it's the obvious, it's the injuries, but it's also the secondary play in general, and then the takeaways. That's a concern. Confidence. The overall talent, man. This is an incredibly talented team. Okay. Yes. So I feel really good about that. The diversity in which they can <clears throat> go at you on offense. I'm a big believer in the coaching. Uh, the pass rush. Guys, they have 61 sacks. They're too shy of the club record. The the, the nearest team in, in, to, in terms of total sacks is the Patriots. You know what number they're at? They're at 50. The Eagles have 11 more than the next closest team. I feel good about the pass rush. So there, there are some of the things that I just generally like about this team. I almost say, like I said, they're different than what you would see, you know, usually in regular, regular offense, regular, and their defense is good, but regular offense, you know, it's going to take a lot of game plan and study and to stop this, this uh, offense, bro. 
you know, where do you guys see him going? Where do you guys see Taysom Hill being? You know, Dalton is okay, but what do you see them doing really against our, our defense? Um, I think they're going to – I'm not worried about him at all. I'm not Dalton. worried about I'm not worried about Taysom Hill. No, I think they'll do I think they'll do a really good job on him. Yeah, I he agree. Doesn't me that I agree much. with that. Yeah, I I agree with that. I mean that Wildcat looks looks fine and dandy against other teams. I think there's too much talent, too much discipline on this defense for him to be that effective. Now, once you get inside the red zone, I think it's a little different. But I think between the twenties, they'll be able to handle him. You know, they have so many variations from what I've seen of that that Wildcat they've run. Over the last couple of years, um, it seems to be more dangerous once they get inside the 20 to 15 more so than it does between the 20s in most cases. Um, but I'm not worried about it overall. You got to have more than just that to beat this team. I mean, we looked at a Bears team that basically the quarterback was running his own version of the Wildcat the whole game. And they were able to hold him off. It was a little scary, a little hairy, but they were able to hold him off. I think they, I think they can contain the, the Saints version of that. And keep in mind too, you know, this is not this is a quarterback with very little mobility. So I think this is a guy they should be able to get to and cause turnovers and create the things we've been talking about that they've been lacking of late. Like this pass rush will get home. These guys are all playing. You know, you're you're not you're not missing any bodies here with this defensive front that's been so nasty. You know, Dak isn't isn't a runner, but he's mobile. And you were still able to get him six times despite how that game went. I think they're going to get to Dalton. I think they're going to affect some throws from Dalton, and I think they will get turnovers in this game. I do. Uh, I, I think their starting left guard is going to be out either Pete. I think and, he's yeah, out. And, and he may Andrew's be out. Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they have two really good tackles, man. You know, um, well, they have, well, their left tackle is just okay. Uh, Wasn't it Ramshek? He's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. You know, he's pretty good. Uh, good center, put, too. Yeah. Well, you know what? The starter. It's actually from Camden. Yeah, Ruiz. Ruiz, yeah, he's out right now. He's yeah. he's on IR. Oh, okay, that's big. Yeah, that's huge. It's huge. Yeah, he's on. I think he's on IR. Jarvis Landry is on IR. Mark Ingram's on IR. Yeah, a lot of guys on IR. Yeah, Cesar Ruiz. He's on IR. Uh, he's on IR also. So mm-hmm. they got some injuries they're dealing with. At the end of the day, um, I'm hoping that Marsh, uh, Marshawn Lattimore doesn't play, and, and May doesn't play. But they're dealing with something also, you know, so we'll see. All right, let's come back, and then we're going to dig into, uh, you know, this Saints team in in general. Um, I'm I'm reading your message, Gunner. Yeah. Yeah, she wants to do today? Yeah, um, she's uh, not in a location to do video. I'm driving in my car for the next hour. She can only do audio. She can't do video. Do you want to take a chance Uh on it? Um. Oh, we have Coach Marcus at at one. She do right now. Let's see if she wants to do right now. So why don't you check during the break? Let's get it. Let's take a time out. If she can do now, we'll get her in now. We got Coach Marcus at one forty. So let's see what we can do. It's perfect. We'll come back and dig into the Saints no matter what, whether whether we're talking to our next guest or a potential guest or not. Got some Saints numbers that might interest you guys when we come back and just kind of who they are, what they are, what they do well, what they don't do well. We'll dive into all those kind of things. So don't go anywhere. Barrett Brooks, Derek Gunn, Rob Ellis. We're Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. All right, I want to tell you about Pro Action Restoration. Pro Action Restoration is the place that you call. They're the people you reach out to. If your home, your business, a property that you may own goes through the inconvenience of water, fire, smoke, mold damage, you name it. They're on call 24 hours, seven days a week. I've gone through it on a Saturday. I reached out to them. They got right out to my parents' house. They fixed the problem. They cleaned it up. The price was right. It couldn't have been a better experience. They are licensed, bonded, fully insured. They've been serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. ProAction will work in conjunction with your insurance company. Again, could be water, could be fire, could be smoke, could be mold remediation. You name it, they can handle it. Give them a call, 610-623-3760, 610-623-3760. Or you could reach out online at ProActionRestoration.com. That's ProActionRestoration.com. Go for the beers. 